Hey guys, today we're going to be going through changing rear brakes. We're going to be pulling off the drums and we're going to be pulling off those shoes also. You're going to start today by lifting good places either right here on either side or you can lift on the frame. I'm just going to lift the whole back end up so I'm going to lift up on the frame. If you don't have an air gun, you might want to go ahead and loosen the lug nuts while it's on the ground so then it'll be easier to break those loose. And just to let you know, give you a heads up, the lug nuts on your Civic, or really all Hondas will be 19 millimeters and let's say you're doing a Corolla or some Toyota, all Toyotas will be a 21 millimeter. And generally for all cars, it'll either be a 19, 21, or a 7, 8. Also, if you using the air gun and you use torque sticks for when you go to put the wheel back on it'll be the blue one for a honda or an orange one for toyota and torque spec will always be 85 foot pounds on honda same goes for toyota Make sure in the beginning you left your e-brake down. <laughs> You're not going to be a full drum off. And I'm just going to pull the drum off. It should come off fairly easy. Sometimes not. Sometimes it'll be on there pretty tight. So what you can do is take a hammer and beat right inside, inside of these studs. But be careful not to hit the studs. What you're doing there is you're breaking free this rust right around the, the center that builds up there and it makes it hard for the drum to come off sometimes. And like I said, you just uh, beat right in here around the studs and hopefully it's going to break the drum loose from the, the wheel hub. Um, in extreme cases, I just brought this out, hopefully this isn't the case, but you can actually heat up around here because this is where this flange piece is what actually gets stuck to the wheel hub assembly. So. But hopefully we'll just be able to hit it and have it come off. So. There you go, you got your drum off. Alright guys, first thing you want to do is make sure the actual parts that you got are actually the parts that you need. So, I'm just going to pull these shoes out. These are the new shoes. In this case, all the shoes are the exact same, so it doesn't really matter. In the case that you have a one of the linings, this is your shoe lining. In the case that one's longer and one's shorter, the shorter will always go towards the front of the car. Because that'll be the primary shoe, and the longer one's the secondary shoe. Alright, now the first and number one rule is do not take both sets of shoes off at the same time. I think dikes work the best because it's not going to cut through the springs and stuff but it just gives you like a really awesome death hold. So a lot of people try and pry it off and do all sorts of things. I believe dikes are definitely the easiest way to go. Alright so once you get this one off sitting right down there. Now she's ready to come out. So, next thing you're going to do is take off these little hold down springs and pins. What I normally do is you just kind of take your dikes, push down in there, and twist, and bam. She comes right out. And then you just pop them off, and the hold should come right out. Next thing you got to do is, you can see this little C-clamp right here. Alright, that little C-clamp right there, you just got to take him off, and, and then that's where you'll put the new new shoe in there. Now, if you're wondering, how in the heck do I get that C-clamp off? What you're going to do is you're going to take a flathead screwdriver, stick it right in where they meet up, and just kind of separate it. Once you kind of got the C-clamp wedged apart, what I like to do is just take the dikes and hit the bottom with one side of the dike. Hit that on the where kind of like the horseshoe meets and then take the other side uh, where they're connected and just squeeze and that pops it right out. There you go. 
And now you get your C clamp off, so the shoe will just slide right out like so. Alright, now since I got the actual piece off, you can see this little pin that I was talking about. This is where that C clamp was actually hooked in. Alright, and when you go to put the new shoe back in, you're going to slide this little pin retainer guy through the shoe first. And then take this little piece right here and put it over top of that. There's a washer on here. And then putting this guy back on is always fun. If it's too hard, just open it up a little bit. Then when it gets back on, you can kind of clamp it down. Alright, next step would be take this little piece right here and hook them in just like that. And then take your other shoe. You go to put it back in, you're going to do the swinging motion right here. Take it like this. The one closest is going to be coming on this side and it's going to be spinning around like so. So that you see the back of that pin right there where my thumb is. And this is going to come up like this. And then this is going to come up like this. Just like that. Alright, and um, a little side note, another thing you may want to do while you have these shoes off is, I right, see this spot, this spot, and there's another one that will just like it right down there. And then there's also three on this side. One, two, and three. You can take some high temp brake grease, it's black, and a lot of these Civics will squeak. You'll hear a squeak when you're applying the brakes, and those six little things are the source of the squeak. So you put high temp grease on there, and you'll also get rid of your squeak, which will be super great. Next thing you'll do is you'll put this little hold down spring back in, and that's how it's supposed to look when it goes back in. And how you do that is you'll line it up, of course, like it, how it came out, so it'll be like that when it comes in. And then you're going to take your dikes and use them to push down on the spring, like how you did to how it comes off. You're going to push and you'll hold the other side with the other finger and then grab it and pull through and make it look like that. That's how you put the whole down spring back in. Next thing you'll want to do is you're going to want to load all your stuff in like like this guy. He's going to get right in there but he's going to be holding this guy right here so it'll look something like that. You're going to load all the stuff up and get it in there to where it fits. Like, it'll all just be sitting in there, or if it was held down, you can't move it. So once you have all that stuff set down in there, you put your hold down spring in, and then do the rest. And you may want to, to make it easier, loosen this all the way down, and then when you get it on, retighten it. Take this piece, just kind of set them in there, and you're going to want to set the, sh the short part uh, towards the backing plate. Set them in there like so, and of course you take this, this little guy, put them in there, take this guy, he's the same either way, and put them in there like that, so it's kind of holding that thing right there, and just set it in there like that. This is where it gets tricky. So, here you get to see how I did it early. Just kind of push down, turn. Now it's back in there. And the next thing you're gonna want to do is put your your springs back on. I'm gonna start with how they came off. This side will go this way. This side will go that way. Like on the other side, it will probably look something like that. So, so I'm just gonna slide them in there. I'm going to grab them right there. There's a little hole i got to make it to you. Alright. Don't forget to put this little spring right here to catch on your self-adjuster and put them right down in there. Oh, and also, uh, make sure you don't forget to put these seals back on or your wheel cylinder will leak. And when you do so, don't use pliers or it will be leaking then for good. Now you're going to want to go in with your spoon or a screwdriver 
and tighten the star wheel back here. You want to tighten it to where it's firm but not too hard or not too loose when you're putting the drum back on. And when you're adjusting, you pull back that little self adjuster thing so you can move it back without it getting caught. That's how it under adjusts and then when you tighten it'll be clicking. So once you get done adjusting, you're going to stick the drum back on. You want it to go on pretty firmly. And generally, you want to watch one of these studs, and it should be able to spin just one turn. So I'm going to have to go back in there and tighten it, but uh, it'll just go like, and then that's how you'll know it's properly adjusted. You also want to make sure when you're lining your hubcap up, you line the valve stem part up to the valve stem on the tire. Now, it's important that you put 85 pounds of torque on your lug nuts. So, I got my torque stick. You can use a torque wrench. Works just the same. Well, that's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe.